Um, first of all, good morning. Um, my name is uh, Senator Bonasek, and I uh, chair the Judiciary Committee. I'm joined by Senator Nazolio at this time, Senator Amador, Senator Breslin, Senator Diaz. Uh, we have 23 members on the judiciary, and because of this terrible weather, um, some may be uh, a little late getting here. Uh, so, but we do have uh, enough proxies uh, to not only conduct the public hearing where we don't need proxies, but when we commence the Judiciary <laughs> Committee hearing, we will have sufficient votes to move our business. So, uh, let me start by saying that in accordance with Section 104 of the Public Offices Law on February 2nd, 2015, we issued a public notice for this public hearing. Uh, Senator Rasenhofer is with us. Uh, Senator, good morning. Good morning. Um, I have behind me uh, Jessica Cherry, who's our counsel to the judiciary. Um, and the public hearing uh, will be for Governor Cuomo's Court of Appeals nominee, uh, Judge Leslie Stein and Judge Eugene Fahey. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is to fill the vacancies of Judge Vicchio Graffio and Judge Robert Smith. Um, uh, I don't have uh, Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson here yet, but uh, she is our ranker on judiciary. Uh, before we start the public hearing, I just would like to say a couple words about Judge Graffio and Judge Smith. Uh, as you know, uh, Judge Victoria Graffio served on the Court of Appeals honorably for the past 14 years. She uh, has an exemplary reputation and service to the bench is undeniable. Her experience as a jurist and temperament were an asset to our state's highest court and her contribution to the law in New York State will undoubtedly have a lasting effect. Many were very disappointed to see her go and we would like to acknowledge her and thank her for her unwavering dedication to the bench and we wish her success in all her future endeavors. With respect to Judge Smith, uh, he filled the vacancy. Uh, Judge Smith had served on the Court of Appeals since his appointment in 2003. He was widely respected for his thorough and diplomatic legal analysis in addition to his lively participation during oral arguments. His temperament and vast legal experience have been an asset to the bench, and we thank him for his many years of service to the state, and we wish him well uh, in all of his endeavors. And uh, Judge Fahey has been uh, put forth by Governor Cuomo to fill the vacancy of Judge Smith. For this public hearing, we have two witnesses, and they're going to provide oral testimony regarding both Judge Stein and Judge Fahey's qualifications. The witnesses appearing before the committee will be Vincent Doyle, who is the past president chair of committee to review judicial nominations, the New York State Bar Association, and Evan Goldberg, who's president-elect, co-chair of the Judicial Screening Committee, New York State Trial Lawyer. Each witness will be limited to 10 minutes of oral testimony from each nominee, followed by questions from members of the committee. Uh, we have also had written testimony submitted to the Judiciary Committee uh, regarding both judges, uh, and, they have, and they will be included in the record. I've circulated the resume, resumes of both judges to the Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, February 4th, to provide an overview of the nominees. Um, based on my review of both candidates prior to the committee starting in the hearing, I think Governor Cuomo has nominated two very well-rounded judicial nominees with decades of experience in the courtroom combined for our highest bench. As you will hear today, let me talk a little bit about Judge Leslie Stein. 
She has 19 years of judicial experience, um, six on the Supreme Court, last seven years on the Appellate Division, Third Department in Albany. Judge Fahey also has 19 years judicial experience. Supreme Court, six years, Appellate Division, uh, excuse me, Supreme Court, nine years, Appellate Division, Fourth Department, eight years, Buffalo. Um, okay, I, I've been joined by Senator DeFrancisco, and now our first witness, please tell us who you are and what you have to say. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Senator Bonacic, members of the Senate Judiciary Committee, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vincent Doyle. <laughs> I'm a past president of the New York State Bar Association and the current chair of the Association's Committee to Review Judicial Nominations. It is my privilege to appear before you today in support of the appointment of the Honorable Leslie Stein as Associate Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals. On behalf of the Association, I thank you for the opportunity to testify concerning Justice Stein's qualifications for the Court of Appeals. The New York State Bar Association is comprised of over 74,000 attorneys, including attorneys in every part of New York State, in every other state in the country, and from over 100 countries around the world. Since 1967, our association has evaluated candidates for the Court of Appeals. Since New York amended its constitution in 1973 to provide for the appointment of Court of Appeals judges, We've provided the governor with our ra ratings of the candidates whose names have been submitted to the governor by the State Commission on Judicial Nomination. Following the governor's selection of one of the candidates for appointment, we've also communicated our rating of that nominee to this committee to assist in the confirmation process. With respect to the present nomination, we have found Justice Stein to be well qualified to serve as an associate judge of the Court of Appeals. Well qualified is our highest rating. I would like to outline for you the process by which our association evaluates the Court of Appeals candidates so you can understand the meaning of our rating. Our committee to review judicial nominations is appointed by the association's president and made up of 17 members from across New York State. Every judicial district is represented on the committee. Consistent with the overall policies of our association, the committee appointments reflect the diversity of our membership and society as a whole. Members are also selected so that a wide variety of practice areas are represented with a particular emphasis on appellate practice. Upon the announcement by the Commission on Judicial Nomination of its list of candidates for appointment to the Court of Appeals, our committee chair appoints subcommittees to investigate the qualifications of each candidate. These subcommittee reviews, uh, subcommittees review biographical material provided by the candidates read sample of the candidate's writings, including written decisions uh, if the candidate is a sitting judge, and interview persons familiar with the candidate's work, background, and character. In the case of judges who have been nominated, the subcommittee includes in their interviews lawyers who have appeared before the judge. Finally, the subcommittees meet with the candidates. Based on the information gathered during the investigation process, the subcommittee prepares a report and recommendations regarding the candidates to present to the full committee. After the completion of the investigations, the committee meets as a whole to review the subcommittee reports concerning the qualifications of each candidate and to personally interview the candidates. The committee then votes to determine whether the candidates will be rated not qualified, qualified, or well qualified. For appointment to the Court of Appeals, uh, pardon me, in making their evaluation for appointment to the Court of Appeals, the committee members are asked to consider the candidate's professional ability and experience character, temperament, and the possession of the special qualities necessary or desirable for the judicial office sought. Under the committee's guidelines, a qualified candidate is one who affirmatively demonstrates qualifications the committee regards as necessary for that office. A well-qualified candidate is one who, in addition, possesses preeminent qualifications for judicial office. After being selected as a candidate by the commission, Justice Stein's qualifications were evaluated by our committee in accordance with these procedures. She met with our full committee on September 15th, 2014. As a result of this investigation and interview, it was the opinion of our committee that Justice Stein is well qualified for the Court of Appeals. Justice Stein has served with distinction as a member of the Appellate Division, Third Department, since 2008. Prior to serving on the Appellate Division, Justice Stein served six years 
as a justice of the Supreme Court and four years as a judge of the Albany City Court. Active in the community, Justice Stein is a founding member of the New York State Institute for Professionalism in the Law, a permanent commission which promotes professionalism among members of the legal profession. Very recently, our association co-sponsored a convocation with the Institute at which I was privileged to moderate a panel concerning changes in legal education. Justice Stein also serves on the Unified Court Systems Advisory Committee on Bar Admissions and the Family Violence Task Force. Her overall breadth of experience, which includes 13 years of private practice and 18 years on the bench, including time as a trial judge and an appellate judge, leads us to con conclude that Justice Stein will serve the State of New York well as an Associate Judge of the Court of Appeals. Accordingly, on behalf of the New York State Bar Association, I am pleased to endorse Justice Stein's appointment to the Court of Appeals and urge the confirmation of this appointment. Thank you for your attention and for inviting participation by the New York State Bar Association in this important process. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Doyle. Any members of the committee have any questions uh, for Mr. Doyle? Uh, Senator Zolio. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Doyle. Uh, Good morning. I'm very interested in the process that uh, you had to engage in. Yes. Uh, it sounds uh, as though a recruitment process to find members of the panel uh, appears very extensive. You indicated uh, members from each judicial district, and the focus, as appropriately it should be here, are practitioners in appellate practice. Uh, tell me, how many candidates uh, you had to review in terms of their qualifications uh, in, in your analysis? Um, so we review each of the uh, candidates that are on the list. So there were seven candidates on the list. We review each. Our policy, and we'll hear this when we testimony about Justice Fahey, is if we have previously reviewed a candidate within the last year or two years, roughly, uh, we may carry over their, uh, their, their rating, but only if we uh, do a due diligence investigation to make sure nothing has changed. But we review the qualifications of each of the candidates. We do a full, what I would call written uh, on the papers and uh, oral, um, contacting uh, lawyers, contacting other judges, contacting colleagues. We do that for every candidate. In person, we meet with each candidate uh, unless we have previously met with them in relation to the same office, the nomination for the same office within the last year or so, and they have received a well-qualified rating. It's difficult to quantify, put a number to, but uh, give a suggestion. How many meetings, and, and including in those meetings, uh, uh, conference calls, and those, yes. uh, did the committee have to engage in, in this uh, seven candidate analysis? Uh, it, it, it's an extensive amount of work, I'll be honest with you, and this is all volunteer work for members of the uh, committee that are asked to serve by the president. Um, the, Majority of the work is done by the subcommittees. They actually do the investigation. So um, we estimated at one point that each subcommittee member can expect to sp spend anywhere between 20 to 40 hours doing the background investigation, including reading decisions of those who are sitting judges, reading briefs, reading public statements, reviewing the written application materials, background, making phone calls, uh, again, to colleagues, lawyers who have practiced with or practiced in front of, uh, lawyers with the cases against when they were practicing. The in-person meetings, the subcommittee has one with each candidate, so those would be uh, uh, one of those for each of the candidates. And then we have a general committee meeting, which again, as I said, we meet with each candidate unless they have previously received a well-qualified. So overall, uh, you know, it's, I would estimate somewhere between 40 to 50 hours of work on each candidate are spent either by the subcommittee or the full committee. Well, thank you for the obvious thoroughness of this uh, work, and we appreciate your recommendations. Well, the thanks go to the committee members and the staff of the State Bar Association, which does terrific work. But thank you for the question, Senator. Okay, before we get to the uh, next question, let me acknowledge some of the senators that have come here. Uh, Senator Ruth Hassel-Thompson, who is the ranker on judiciary, is present. Uh, Se Senator Serino, Senator Vendetti, Senator DeLon, Senator Flanagan, Senator O'Mara. Uh, thank you all for making the efforts in this terrible weather to be here for this meeting. Next question, Senator Razenhoff. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Vince, welcome. Uh, thank you, Senator. Back to Albany, and I want to first thank you for 
uh, not only chairing uh, this very important committee, but also for all the work that you did for the State Bar Association. I think with all the work you've done, you've exceeded the Chief Judge's recommendations for pro bono work that you've done <laughs> by the pike. Um, uh, I appreciate uh, all the hard work that is done. Obviously, as members of the committee, we, are, we don't have the time to do the investigation um, that, that you have done and your committee has done. Um, I don't have a question because you've already done you know, so much of the work here. Um, I appreciate the work that you've done for us. I think the recommendations from the committees are solid. Um, I just want to welcome you to Albany and uh, the beautiful weather that we're having here. And uh, thank you for your service. Well, I was waiting for a chance to say that. We're both from Western New York, Senator. And, and Senator Bonasek keeps saying it's horrible weather here. It's pretty nice here. Uh, <laughs> so thank you. Just another balmy day in Albany. <laughs> uh, Senator Diaz. Good morning, Senator. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a question question. When there was two lawyers, two judges, there was no question. When you do the interviews and the screening, the judges that were already on the bench, they also were in the bench. Yeah. Senator, as, as to the, the first vacancy, which is a uh, vacancy created uh, by um, uh, Judge Graffio, uh, who had reached the end of the term, she was eligible for reappointment. So she was one of the seven candidates uh, that the commission uh, put forth, along with Justice Stein and, and five others. Um, Judge Graffio uh, did apply. Uh, she was uh, on the list of seven, and she was rated by our committee. She was also rated well qualified. Uh, but the decision of those seven candidates is up to the governor. Uh, 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 under the law, he, is, he receives a list of seven and he makes the appointment. The State Bar Association's role, the role of the committee that I serve on, is simply to rate the candidates. We don't rank them. We don't endorse one. Uh, we found Justice Graffio to be well qualified as well. But uh, you, you could also recommend you to say, I will see no reason why the judge of this person should be with the place. Is it good? Uh, yeah. we, we, we've never done that. Um, that's mm -hmm. not part of what we view our role as. We view our role as taking so each candidate and... Do you think that the governor made the right decision by not appointing two good judges back well, in the bench? Our... We view our role as being to take each candidate in and of themselves and, and make a recommendation whether they should be rated well qualified, qualified or not qualified. And we stop there. We view if we went any further uh, that we would be uh, engaging in a political discussion which really is for, for this committee and for the Senate. I, I believe that when, when a group is appointed to, to recommend, mm -hmm. a group should recommend. And I think that you, 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 you feel that the person that is being seen, the person that is being honoring their duties and doing the job, I think that the, if you are going to recommend, you should recommend also. You see no reason why. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, under, under the Constitution, the Commission, and we're not the Commission, we're a State Bar the Committee, the, we, we simply so rate. We simply rate. We rate. We say whether each candidate is qualified or well qualified or or, high, or uh, well qualified in this situation. A and the other thing, the second appointment, Judge Smith, who was a second judge, Judge Smith is ineligible to continue because he's aged out. Um, he has reached the age of 70, so he's not eligible for reappointment. I, I just want to be clear on what is what you recommend sure. and what is what you keep to yourself. Yeah. We, we rated each of the candidates. The governor chose one of the candidates. We rated well qualified. I would yes. say, if I'm doing a good job, I'm honoring my duty and I'm there. Why are you recommending get, to give me up? Why not say, hey, that's a good purpose. You should give it. <laughs> the, 
Constitution gives the governor the, that right. Uh, okay. uh, does anyone else have any questions of uh, Mr. Doyle? Uh, Mr. Doyle, thank you, but don't go too far because <laughs> when we do the public hearing for Judge Fahey, we're going to have you back. I'll definitely be back for that. Okay. Thank you, Senator. Uh, our next witness is Evan Goldberg. He's here on behalf of the New York State Trial Lawyers Association. Uh, Evan, good morning. It's still morning. You're on. Good morning. My name is Evan Goldberg. I am the president-elect of the New York State Trial Lawyers Association, and I appear here today on behalf of the NISLA Board of Directors and our 3,500 attorney members who practice in trial and appellate courts throughout the state. Thank you, Chairman Bonasek, for inviting NISLA to participate today and for this opportunity to speak in support of Governor Cuomo's nomination of Justice Leslie E. Stein for Associate Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals. For 60 years, NISLA has fought to protect equal access to the civil justice system for all New Yorkers. The constitutional right to a trial by jury is the foundation of equal access, and NISLA vigorously opposes any compromise of this critical right, whether by legislation or through the overly aggressive application of judicial doctrines and procedures that can deny a worthy litigant their day in court. The appointment of a new judge to the Court of Appeals is therefore always of great significance to NISLA, the legal rights of the hundreds of thousands of ordinary New Yorkers NISLA members represent depend upon judicial restraint and careful application of the law by each member of the court. We applaud judges who demonstrate a preference for allowing cases to be presented to the jury and who apply great caution in the use of summary judgment and doctrines such as collateral estoppel that can sometimes prevent jury decisions from being made on the merits. NISLA's Judiciary Committee had the honor of interviewing all the candidates recommended by the New York State Commission on Judicial Nomination to fill the vacancy created at the conclusion of Judge Victoria Graffio's term. The committee rated Justice Stein as highly qualified and highly recommended. Her exceptional capabilities, dedication to equality before the law, and the results that she has achieved for New Yorkers more than warrant the highest rating the committee could award and marked her out among an exceptionally qualified slate of candidates. Justice Stein has a long history of service, not only to the legal system, but to the cause of gender equality and protecting the victims of domestic violence. Prior to joining the bench, Justice Stein was well respected for her 15 years of experience in private practice, where she focused on family law. She went on to be elected to the Albany City Court, then to the Supreme Court in 2001. At the Supreme Court, Justice Stein was proactive not only in the way she administered justice in individual cases, but also with regard to the system. She served as the administrative judge for the Rensselaer County Integrated Domestic Violence Part that allowed families to resolve their criminal, family, and matrimonial matters before a single judge. In this role, Justice Stein demonstrated her commitment not just to the rule of law, but to the fair, reasonable, and humane application of the law. Upon her nomination to the Appellate Division in 2008, Justice Stein continued to tackle the difficult issue of domestic violence, co-chairing the court system's family violence task force. Her commitment to this cause is demonstrative of her finely tuned judicial philosophy that balances the need of the individual with those of society as a whole. Her steadfast dedication to improving the lives of others will no doubt be a positive influence on the work of the Court of Appeals. Justice Stein is also dedicated to improving the legal profession and ensuring that New Yorkers are represented by ethical, well-trained lawyers. She was a founding member of the New York State Judicial Institute on Professionalism and lectures for a number of state and local bar associations. On a personal note, just over a week ago, I had the honor of, of presenting Justice Stein with an award at a bar association event. Everyone in attendance was impressed by her remarks and assured that she would uphold the high standard of the nationally esteemed Court of Appeals. In conclusion, Nisla commends Governor Cuomo for his nomination of Justice Stein. We welcome her balanced approach to the law and look forward to Justice Stein applying her well-deserved reputation for balance and reasonableness to the critically important matters before the court. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Goldberg. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Goldberg? 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, My pleasure. I'd like to just note that Judge Stein uh, has received the highest ratings of well qualified or highly qualified from several bar organizations throughout the state of New York. Um, now we're going to start the second phase of the public hearing, and that deals with uh, Judge Eugene Fahey. So uh, we're going to call back, this is like Groundhog Day in a way, we're going to call back uh, Vincent Doyle uh, to come up uh, to give testimony on behalf of uh, Judge Fahey. Uh, thank you, Senator Bonasek, members of the uh, committee and ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know who I am. I, I, again, I'm here on behalf of the New York State Bar Association uh, and as chair of the Association's Committee to Review Judicial Nominations. And it's my privilege to appear before you today in support of the appointment of the Honorable Eugene Fahey as Associate Judge of the New York Court of Appeals. I reviewed the process by which our evaluation evaluates candidates uh, for the Court of Appeals in connection with Justice Stein's hearing. Therefore, I will not repeat those procedures at this time. With respect to the present nomination, we have found Justice Fahey to be well qualified to serve as an associate judge of the Court of Appeals. Again, well qualified is our highest rating. And a well qualified candidate is one who, in addition to possessing the qualities necessary for service as an associate judge, possesses preeminent preeminent qualifications for that office. After being selected as a candidate by the Commission on Judicial Nomination, Justice Fahey's qualifications were evaluated by our committee in accordance with our procedures. Justice Fahey had been a previous candidate on two prior lists released by the Commission. Each of those prior times, our committee had also found him to be well qualified. Our procedure under those circumstances is to do a full investigation uh, in, in writing and, and orally by phone, but to waive the in-person interview if the candidate had been previously found to be well qualified. As a result of this full investigation and consideration, it, it was the opinion of our committee that Justice Fahey is well qualified for the Court of Appeals. Justice Fahey has served admirably for eight years as a member of the Appellate Division 4th Department. Prior to serving on the Appellate Division, Justice Fahey served nine years as a Justice of the Supreme Court and nine years as a judge of the Buffalo City Court. He also served 16 years as a member of the Buffalo Common Council. His overall breadth of experience leads us to conclude that Justice Fahey will serve the state of New York well as an associate judge of the Court of Appeals. On a personal note, I have appeared numerous times before, uh, over the years before Justice Fahey, while he was in the City Court, Supreme Court, the Commercial Division of the Supreme Court, and the Appellate Division Fourth Department. Each and every time I appeared before Justice Fahey, I was impressed by his intelligence, diligence, and judicial temperament. I know that my opinion is shared by others who encounter Justice Fahey. He is an outstanding jurist held in the highest regard by the practicing bar. On behalf of the New York State Bar Association, I am pleased to endorse Justice Fahey's appointment to the Court of Appeals and urge confirmation of this appointment. Thank you for your attention and for inviting participation by the New York State Bar Association in this important process, Senator. Any questions uh, for Mr. Doyle with respect to Judge Fahey? Senator Diaz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, Mr. Doyle. Yes, sir. I have to ask you to go The two city judges that yes. were there, how would they rate? Sure. Your point is five qualified. How would they rate? The vacancy that Justice. Two judges that were there, you said you interviewed How would they rate? We interviewed and rated one, Justice Graffio, or Judge Graffio, pardon me, was a candidate for the vacancy that uh, Justice Stein has been nominated for. We rated her well qualified. Governor Cuomo did not choose to uh, select her for an additional term. Judge Smith is the second judge who is there now. He has aged out, and pardon me, he'll, he won't like me using that term. He, the, he has reached the age of 70, and under the Constitution, he cannot continue to serve. So he was not a candidate. He was not on the commission's list. We did not interview him. We did not rate him. So, so one of the two, of the two well, well qualified. With the same, the same intent that they all With the same process that all of the other candidates went through, yes. Uh, the process that I'm, the intention, that word that you put here, there. The intention? The, 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 mm -hmm. the, uh, oh, intensity, yes. 
Um, well qualified is well qualified. We meant it as, as much for uh, Judge uh, Graffio as we did for everyone else. Again, that's that's not our role. The Constitution gives the governor that. I, I, I don't think in this setting you can you can say that 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 has a certain import. The governor has that choice under the Constitution, Senator. Any other questions of uh, Mr. Doyle? Okay, Mr. Doyle, thank you very much for your thank, appearance today. Thank you, Senator. Okay, uh, Mr. Evan Goldberg, welcome back. Thank you. <clears throat> it's been too long, Your Honor. Again, for the record, my name is Evan Goldberg, and I'm the president-elect of the New York State Trial Lawyers Association. I'm appearing here today on behalf of our board of directors and our 3,500 attorney members who participate in trial and appellate courts throughout the state. Thank you once again, Chairman Bonasek, for inviting NISL to participate and for this opportunity to speak in support of Governor Cuomo's nomination of Justice Eugene Fahey for Associate Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals. We respectfully ask that the history of our organization and its mission of ensuring continued access to the civil justice system, as stated during the testimony in support of Justice Stein's confirmation, be incorporated by reference. NISL's Judiciary Committee had the honor of interviewing all of the candidates recommended by the New York State Commission on Judicial Nomination to fill the vacancy created by the retirement of Judge Robert Smith. Among such an impressively credentialed panel of candidates, Justice Fahey stood out for his judicial experience as well as for his reputation for fairness on the bench. The committee rated Justice Fahey as highly qualified and highly recommended. Justice Fahey is widely respected for his almost two decades of judicial experience. Serving first as a Buffalo City Court judge, he quickly advanced to the Supreme Court before being appointed to the Appellate Division, Fourth Department. Many NISLA members have had the honor of appearing before Justice Fahey, whether at trial or on appeal. Members of the plaintiff's bar, indeed all who appear before Justice Fahey, recognize that they are given an unbiased and objective hearing and that their legal arguments receive close attention by one of our state's most learned judges. The breadth and depth of legal knowledge Justice Fahey has attained over the course of his career is readily apparent upon even a cursory examination of his record. Before serving on the bench, Justice Fahey represented clients as a practicing attorney, earning a reputation for collegiality and fairness that followed him to the bench. As a judge of the Buffalo City Court and later as a justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Fahey handled thousands of criminal, civil, and commercial cases. The experience clearly served him well on his nomination to the Appellate Division, where his well-stated and thoughtful decisions provide a clear guide for both attorneys and judges at the trial level. Equally, Justice Fahey's dissenting opinions have been taken up by the Court of Appeals as the appropriate outcome, demonstrating characteristic resolve in addition to legal scholarship. In conclusion, Governor Cuomo has made another excellent choice in his nomination of Justice Fahey. We welcome his thorough and open-minded approach to the law and look forward to Justice Fahey applying his well-deserved reputation for fairness to the court and the manner in which they address the mo most important legal issues of the day. Thank you again, Chairman Bonasek, for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Any questions of Ms. Goldberg? Um, I, I see that uh, Senator Perkins has joined us. Good afternoon, Senator. Good afternoon. Uh, at this point, uh, let me just make a note. Uh, similar to Judge Stein, Judge Fahey also received the highest ratings of well-qualified and highly qualified from all bar groups across the state. Um, in addition to the testimony that we've heard, we have had written testimony uh, from bar organizations that will be incorporated into the public record of this public hearing. Uh, at this time, I'd like to recognize uh, Senator Hassel Thompson, our ranker on judiciary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I'll reserve whatever time I have for the questioning period. I don't really have a statement except to just thank the governor for sending us extraordinary candidates for us to interview and to review today. Okay. Uh, that will conclude the public hearing. Uh, we'll take a brief recess for about five minutes. 
and then convene a meeting of the Judiciary Committee when Judge Stein and Judge Fahey will appear and address the committee and any questions that members will have uh, for those nominees will take place at that time. So uh, we'll, the public hearing is deemed adjourned at 10 after 12 uh, this afternoon. Thank you.